Summer-like, for an instant, the autumn sun bursts out, and the light through the turning elms is green and clear. It slants down the path and ragged marigolds glow, fiery again, last flames of the dying year. A blue tit darts with a flash of wings to feed where the coconut hangs on the pear tree above the well. He digs at the meat like a tiny pickaxe tapping with his needle sharp beak as he clings to the swinging shell. Then he runs up the trunk short footed and sleek like a mouse and perches to sun himself, all his body and brain, exult in the sudden sunlight gladly believing that the cold is over and the summer is here yet again but i see the umber clouds that drive for the sun and a sorrow no argument ever can make away goes through my heart as i think of the nearing winter and the transient light that gleams like a ghost of may and the bird unaware blessing the summer eternal joyfully laboring proud in his strength Gay plumed, unaware of the hawk and the snow and the frost bound nights, and his death for doom. Welcome to another episode of Our Ghost Real with me, Corrine. I am in a place which there is no ghost stories attached to here, but it's an absolutely beautiful place. But the reason why I came is that it's famous for one of the graves here and i'm actually beside the grave right now and this is orwell and if you don't know him he's a really famous writer he did animal farm which was one of them and it's really cute because people have actually left like animals on there and coins on there um and this is a picture of him in Paris down here um, and people have left writing pens you know it's really really lovely and then roses as well on there so people clearly still celebrate this author um, he also wrote 1984 which is an also very famous famous book they're probably two of his most famous works what I've just mentioned now um, but this is his resting place um, and the reason why I came here is firstly when I was at school I did have to read obviously um, his works and yes they are very very good um, and also as well to write a book with the life that he had he had an extremely amazing life actually I was re um, researching a little bit about him before I did this video and yeah he's been all around the world like to various different places um, you know and he's had such a colorful life and so for him to be here in kind of this little village in the middle of Oxfordshire is rather odd <laughs> but it also is very fitting in a place called Sutton Courtney and it is surrounded by beautiful old medieval pools so again there's so much history to this place it's in a gorgeous location a abbey that is very very close by unfortunately I cannot go into the abbey because it is privately owned and is now a retreat uh, and spa kind of place um so unfortunately i cannot go in there uh but it's it, it's a beautiful beautiful looking building and there's a lot of old medieval buildings here so i'll take you kind of around them but what i might just do just out of curiosity because the thing is eric arthur blair had absolutely no connection to this place he never actually came to this place in real life so the fact that he's buried here is I suppose quite fascinating um so on the off chance to see maybe he is around and maybe he maybe he is still here I might just very quickly do a little tiny investigation and then I'll show you a little bit more of the sites 
around Sutton Courtney. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, so, without further ado, don't forget to press that like and subscribe button for me. And let's get into the video. George Orwell was born on June the 25th in 1903 in Motihari, Bengal, India. He died in January the 21st, 1950 in London, England. He was famous as a novelist, essayist. He also created poems, but his fame rose from the novels Animal Farm, which was produced in 1945, and the novel 1984, which was produced in 1949. The latter of these is a profound anti-utopian novel that examines the dangers of totalitarian rule. He was born as Eric Arthur Blair, but Orwell never entirely abandoned his original name. But his first book, Down and Out in Paris and London, appeared in 1933 as the work of George Orwell. This surname is derived from the River Orwell in England, in East Anglia. In time, he became closely attached to this name. And only a few people, bar his relatives, knew that his real name was Blair. The name change corresponded to a profound shift in Orwell's lifestyle, in which he changed from a pillar of British imperial establishment into a literary and political rebel. He was born in Bengal, India, and into a class of sahibs. His father was a minor British official in the Indian civil service. His mother was of French extraction, was the daughter of an unaccessible merchant in Burma. He then ended up returning to England with his parents and he was sent to a boarding school in 1911 in, on the Sussex coast where he was distingu distinguished among the other boys by his poverty and his intellectual brilliance. He grew up morose, withdrawn and quite eccentric and he was later to tell this series of life of these years in an autobiography essay which was called Such Such Were the Joys in 1953. Orwell then ran, won scholarships to two of England's most leading schools Wellington and Eton, and briefly attended the former before continuing his studies in the latter, where he stayed from 1917 to 1921. Orwell decided to follow family tradition, and in 1922 he went to Burma as an assistant district superintendent in the Indian Imperial Police. Yet from boyhood, he had always wanted to become a writer. He also created a novel on these days called The Burmese Days and also sketches. In 1927, Orwell would leave to go back to England to fight against imperialism. And on January the 1st, 1928, he took the decisive step of resigning from the imperial police. Already in autumn 1927, he had started on a course of action that was to shape his character as a writer. Donning ragged clothes, he went into the East End of London to live in cheap lodging houses and live among beggars and labourers. He then also spent time in Paris in the impoverished sections and worked as a dishwasher in French hotels and restaurants and then also worked in hop fields in Kent. These experiences gave Orwell the material for some of his books. Orwell's revulsion against imperialism led not only to his personal rejection of the lifestyle itself, but to a political reorientation. Immediately after returning from Burma, he called himself an anarchist 
and continued to do so for several years during the 1930s. However, he began to consider himself then a socialist, though he too was also a libertarian in his thinking, and then also declared himself a communist. He, by the time the World War II was starting to come into fruitation, Orwell was in Spain. He went to report on the civil war there and stayed with the Republican Militalia. He was seriously wounded in Tyrol with damage to his throat which permanently affected his voice and also endowed his speech with a strange compelling quietness. Later in May 1937, after having fought in Barcelona against communists, He had to flee from Spain with his life. He ended up back in England when World War II then was declared. Orwell was rejected from military service and instead he ended up in the BBC. He left, which is a British broadcasting corporation. He left the BBC in 1943 and became literary editor of the Tribune, which is a socialist paper associated with the British Labour leader. In this time period, Orwell became a prolific journalist. And then in 1944, Orwell finished Animal Farm, a political fable based on the story of a Russian revolution. This would become one of Orwell's finest works, full of wit and fantasy, and admirably written. It has, however, then been overshadowed by his last remaining book that he would ever write, which was 1984 in 1949, a novel he wrote as a warning after years of brooding. The novel is set in an imaginary future in which the world is dominated by warring totalitarian police state. Orvo wrote the last pages of 1984 in a remote house on the Her- Hebridean island of Jura, which he had bought from the proceeds of Animal Farm. He worked between bouts of hospitalization for tuberculosis, which have ended his life in London Hospital in January 1950. I'm going to cat ball down. Um, I'm feeling really bad because I actually didn't bring any flowers. Um, and that's like the second time now that I have done an investigation and forgot to bring things. And I feel really, I just feel really bad. Um, so I'm going to have to come back at big and bring something. Because... So Eric, Eric Arthur Blair, my name is Kareem. I mean, you know harm or anything. Um, I just want to find out, obviously you wrote those books. Um, you wrote some very famous books. I have actually also written a book. It's not famous though. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to plug it right now. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to find it, it's on Amazon. <laughs> Uh, it's called El Nevermore. There you go. <laughs> it's by me, <laughs> Corrine. <laughs> um, there you go. I just plugged myself. Um, but yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I wrote that when I was at, still at school. But it's extremely hard to write a book. So the fact that you managed to write so many books um, is very impressive. I have to say, writing one is hard enough. Um, So if you are here, obviously I don't mean you any disrespect or any harm or anything like that. Ah, it's an animal. I was going to say I can hear a noise, but it's just an animal. It's lovely that people have kept giving you money here. Actually, I do have some money on me, so maybe I can give you some money, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a spirit box session now. Um, Because the cat ball is not really going off, so I'm going to do a spirit box session. Just to see if I get anything through. Um, Also, I'm calling out to you any spirits that are here. Doesn't necessarily mean Eric has to come through, but anyone who would like to say anything 
you're very welcome to do so. Because also, another one is um, there is an ex prime minister who is buried here as well. I haven't found his grave yet. Um, I think he's more towards the church up there. So I need to go and investigate that. But he was a prime minister. And he is also buried here as well. So we've got a lot of kind of like a high status people buried in here. Okay. So if there is any spirits here that would like to come forward, my name is Kareen. I mean you absolutely no harm. I've got a device here in front of me. And all you have to do is come and say and like talk. That is it. You can use this to talk to me. Is Eric Blair here? If there is anyone here, or if Eric Blair is here, or if someone who knows Eric Blair is here, can you tell me the, I said it already, but there is a very famous, very famous book that he wrote, and it's got those things on there. It's got those. Can you tell me what the, name of the book is called please using this device What about he wrote a very famous other one which is a date can you give me the date please Tell me what your name is, please. <laughs> or can you tell me the name on the grave that I'm currently standing in front of? So we'll stand in front of this one. Um, just so you can see the name, there's the name there. So can you give me the name of the person that I'm standing in front of, please? I wasn't getting anything down there. I did stay that quite a little bit down there and I just wasn't really getting any responses. So I have now moved. I have moved and I have found Herbert Henry Asquith and he was the Earl of Oxford but he was also Prime Minister of England in April 1908 to December 19. 16 I think that is or 1918 can't quite make that out but I'll have to go home and <laughs> google that <laughs> um so he died in 1928 um so I thought maybe I will give this one a go and maybe if maybe if he's around don't know if he is but who knows 
he might be. So, hello, my name is Corrine. If Herbert Henry Asquith is here, then I'd love to speak to you, if that is okay, Mr. Prime Minister. Do you call him Sir? I'm guessing you call him Sir. I don't know. <laughs> would, it be, oops, would it be Sir? I'll call you Sir. Just because... white dove actually that's just appeared on the roof there my camera is not doing their justice but the white dove has just appeared up there there you go just saw it out of the corner of my eye and I think that's really pretty <clears throat> anyway Sir Asquith can you tell me what is it like to be Prime Minister I'm sorry, I've, I've never actually spoken to a Prime Minister before and I hope I'm not coming off very rude. That's not what my intention is, I promise. But I just want to find out what life was like for you as Prime Minister. Must have been pretty hard. Must have been a very tough, tough role. I bet you had to make some very tough decisions as Prime Minister. <laughs> who was the person that you met? Or who are, the, who are the MPs that I might know that you met? Tell me what your wife's name was. I think she's also buried here. On the other side. Helen, yes. I just realized I just said it out and I didn't mean to do that. Do you like being buried here? Nice look at there. Some beautiful yew trees here. Absolutely gorgeous. I do. I'm obsessed with yew trees. This one here in front of me is absolutely gorgeous. It's massive as well. I'm obsessed with yew trees. There's another one right over there as well. And another one. <laughs> this is yew trees over here. But can you tell me the building that you lived in in London when you were Prime Minister? What's it called? What is the number of it? There's a specific number. I wasn't really getting anything 
particularly there either that I can make out. The, the thing that I was looking for is number 10 Downing Street because that is where all Prime Ministers used to live um, when they, oh sorry, used to? No, they still do. I don't know why I just said used to. <laughs> Can't even blame the heat for this one because it's actually quite cold today. Hence why I'm in actually a jumper because it's actually really cold. Um, but yeah, I meant to say <laughs> <laughs> that's where they do live and that is the name of the residence so it's interesting that I didn't get anything well I don't think I did anyway thank you so much for watching and tuning in to this one I hope that you did enjoy it even though actually I didn't get anything and I think that's the first time in quite some time I haven't got anything um but I'm actually quite happy about that uh, so please let me know in the comments what you thought about this one um, also I thought it would be a great one to do because the politics is everywhere at the moment um, so I thought oh very topical uh, also as well this I will be doing a second part but the second part will just be an exploration of or walkthrough sorry of the village so if that's kind of not your thing you don't have to tune into that one um, uh, but I'll see you for another episode where I'm ghost hunting again. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button for me and leave me a comment. And I shall see you guys soon for another spooky episode. Take care everyone. Love you all. Bye.